It's Joe from Extreme Terrain. In this video, we're going over the Terraflex 2-inch Falcon Sport tow haul lift system fitting all 05 and newer Tacomas. Now, this is gonna be a great option for you if you're looking to pay top dollar for high quality adjustable suspension setup. It's going to allow you to run anywhere from no lift all the way up to two and a quarter inches of lift in the front and one and a quarter inches of lift in the rear. And on top of that, it's basically gonna be able to take any abuse you could throw at it, whether you're towing, you have something heavy in the bed, or just doing some plain old off-roading. Now, diving into this kit, let's talk about each component one by one break down all the features on everything that's going on here. And we're gonna get these all side by side next to the factory stuff in just a minute and really point out the differences. But for now, let's talk about these front struts. Now, these are gonna be a huge upgrade over the factory stuff. 6061 aluminum body that's also a lot bigger in diameter. That's gonna help contribute to the cooling capacity as well as there's more fluid actually in the strut. Hardened steel shaft, that's gonna be great for durability. And speaking about longevity, at the bottom here, we also have some Zerk fittings, allowing you to keep those nice and lubricated if need be. Now the real piece on these struts, it's gonna be this snap ring right in the middle here. This is where the lift is gonna be coming from and you get three adjustment settings. This one up at the top here, this is going to be for no lift whatsoever. This one in the middle, which is what it's set to right out of the box, this is gonna be for a level ride height. Now for our install, we're gonna leave that right there at level, but that might not be the case for you, especially so if you have a heavy duty steel front bumper, maybe one with a winch in it, that adds a lot of weight and weight adds sag to the front end of your truck. If that's your scenario, you'd wanna take that snap ring, move it to the bottom position, and that's gonna give you the extra push up to dial out that added weight. So a little bit of adjustability there, that's really, really nice in my opinion. Not something you can really change on the fly, so you'd have to make that decision pre-install, but it's really nice to have a choice. Now, speaking about upgrades, this is gonna be a mono tube design. And when you're comparing that to a twin tube, what that basically means is, you have more fluid in there, which is great for cooling, but there's also a clear separation between the gas and hydraulic fluid, which is gonna help you resist cavitation when you're really, really leaning on these things, you're compressing them and expanding them rapidly. A lot of times that fluid in the air can mix and that's where shock fade comes from. Not the case with this monotube. This is gonna take the abuse way better than a lot of other designs out there. Now that does come at a slight cost when comparing these to factory they are gonna be just a tiny bit stiffer, and I wanna stress, it's not like you can't daily drive on these. The ride is just fine. However, that is gonna be the slight trade-off. Moving right along to the rear, you can see these lift blocks right here at the front. This is where our rear lift is gonna be coming from, one and a quarter inches in height in total. Those are gonna sit right in between our leaf springs and axle tube and get the truck up in the air a little bit at the rear. Now, for the rear, we also have some brand new components as well. We got brand new microcellular foam bump stops, which is a nice touch, and of course, longer U-bolts to accommodate for that extra height. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering, one and a quarter inches at the rear, two and a quarter inches up at the front. What's up with that inch disparity? Now, what that's for is to dial out what's called rake. All Tacomas and trucks in general for that matter, they sit a little bit lower in the front, a little bit higher in the rear. And the purpose there is to dial out any added weight. If you have something heavy in the bed or if you're towing a heavy load, the truck would then squat in the rear a little bit and sit level. If you're not doing either of those two things often, it's more of a looks thing. This is definitely gonna be able to do both basically, fix the rake and still allow you to tow and haul around a heavy payload at the same time, which really gives you the best of both worlds in functionality and style. Now, as far as upgrades in the rear, we do have another huge one to talk about, and that's gonna be this awesome pair of reservoir shocks. The reservoir, that's going to allow you to have a little bit more hydraulic fluid in there, which is gonna help you out with cooling exactly what you want. Again, when you're leaning on these, the rear is gonna hold up just as well as the front. You also get a fast adjust knob on there. It's got three settings, comfort, moderate, and heavy. That's going to allow you to dial in the stiffness, allowing you to control whatever payload you have on the rear of your Tacoma. Now, of course, these are also a little bit longer to allow you to deal with that extra lift we have in the rear of our truck. And they also come with some roost guards as well. Keep that piston shaft protected, deal with any debris flung up by the tires when you're doing some off-roading, which is a nice little touch. So what kind of tires can you expect to fit on a suspension system like this one that's gonna give you two inches of lift? So as far as tire sizing goes, you really can't go that much bigger over factory. The factory wheels on this truck, they're gonna be about 30.6 inches tall. 
As you can see, we tried the 33s and even under light turning, you're gonna hit fender liner. If you wanted to cut that out of the way, I'm sure you could get away with it a little bit better. However, the max I would go here is probably in the middle ground, 31 and a half, maybe 32 inches. Max I would personally go is 265.70 R16, somewhere in that area. That's gonna be about 31.6. So next up, let's talk about a big one, and that is gonna be the price for something like this one. Simply put, this is a really high quality kit. You're getting a lot here, and the price is gonna reflect that. I'll cut right to the chase. This is gonna be about 1,500, 1,600 bucks to pick up for your Tacoma. Now, do I think that's worth it? If you're looking to go with something that is better than just any other standard space or lift kit, this is a great option. And I think this is something that's going to hold up for a very, very long time. A lot of engineering goes into something like this. And yes, I do think it is worth the price tag and TerraFlex even backs it with their three-year warranty. So next up, let's get to the good stuff. Let me show you how to get this installed on your Tacoma. Now, before we do, a couple of things I do wanna go over here. If you plan on using your factory wheels and tires after the install, there is a little bit of extra cutting involved. They have a little bit too much backspacing and we need to make room for our reservoir. So the rear shock bucket is gonna to have to have a small cut taken out of it. Also, trucks that are on the newer side, specifically 2015, 16, 17, and anything newer, it's gonna require the use of a 7 8 inch drill bit on that upper rear shock mount. I'll show you how all that works in just a second here. Now, the install is not gonna be easy. We're gonna need a spring compressor. I'm gonna give it a full three out of three. It should take you about a day if you come with the right tools. So without any further ado, let me show you what tools you'll need and how it's done. Tools I use for this install will include the impact mini ductor. Some safety glasses are gonna be a must. A good set of pry bars, the drill, ratchet, good set of adjustables. This one in the middle here is called the spud wrench. It's got the alignment dowel at the end. That is really, really helpful. Good set of wrenches from 14 millimeters all the way up to 19 millimeters. Ratcheting wrenches will help you a ton here. Sockets ranging from 22 millimeters all the way down to 10. Allen keys ranging from four millimeters all the way up to eight millimeters. A U-joint, some spray lubricant like PB Blaster, brake clean, spray paint, a half inch drill bit, as well as some new cotter pins and some blue Loctite. If you are working on a 2015 and newer, you will also need a seven eighths inch drill bit. Step bit will help you out. Needle nose pliers, center punch, Sharpie, tape measure, hammer. And if you plan on running factory wheels, you'll also need a cutoff wheel and die grinder. If you have aftermarket wheels, you will not need either of those two. Now not pictured in this shot will be the spring compressor and the floor jacks. So over by the truck, we can get started with the install. First things first, you wanna make sure your truck is jacked up nice and safely. Use jack stands, throw a tire underneath of it. You wanna be careful with that one. Secondly, go ahead and pop the wheels off. That's gonna reveal all your suspension components. A nice healthy dose of PB Blaster, some sort of rust penetrant is gonna help. The earlier you can get that soaking, the better. Now, to start on our suspension components, we're actually not. The first thing we're gonna do is disconnect our brake line brackets. They're held on with some 10 and 12 millimeter bolts. During the install, you don't wanna stretch those, so we're just gonna go ahead and disconnect the brackets first thing. So the first one we're gonna disconnect is a 12 millimeter bolt right here on the knuckle. Pop that out of the way, and for safekeeping, just gonna thread the hardware right back in. Next one we're gonna remove is right here on the frame. And this is 12 as well. And the last one's gonna be right here on the upper control arm. Next thing we're gonna disconnect is our sway bar. It's held on by a 17 millimeter nut. Now, if this does spin on you, you can get in here with a six millimeter Allen key to hold that ball joint still. We're gonna try with the impact first. Lucky enough, no problem. So you can go ahead and pop that out, move it aside, and we're gonna do the same thing over on the other side. I'm gonna hit that off camera and we can move right along. Now, the next thing we're gonna focus on here is our tie rod. And that has a cotter pin in it, so I'm just gonna take the needle nose and Make that nice and flat, so hopefully we can pull it out without breaking it. To be honest, I'll probably replace both of these anyways. Actually, not too bad. It's 
surprisingly. Old truck, working on an 05, came right out. Now we can remove that castle nut with a 19 millimeter socket. And what I'm gonna do actually, is I'm gonna thread that right back on a couple threads. Reason being, is this tie rod is stuck in this taper right here. So what we're gonna have to do is give that a tap with the hammer to release it. You're gonna wanna make sure you have a pair of these with you just to be safe. So now that we have that pop loose, we can fix any damage done to the dust shield here and then go ahead and remove that nut. Next thing we're gonna take care of is our upper ball joint. And there's a cotter pin in that, so we're just gonna go ahead and get that out of there. Now we can come in with a 19 millimeter socket on the U-joint and get that nut off of there. And just like before, gonna thread that back on while we pop that ball joint. Now this is gonna serve two purposes. One, it's gonna protect our threads, and two, it's gonna catch this upper control arm from popping up too fast. Now we can remove the nut and pull the two apart. Next, we're gonna work on this bolt on the lower side of our strut. It's 19 mil on both sides. So we're gonna go in there, grab that. And we're gonna push that bolt out. Next thing we're gonna tackle is up at the top here. We got three 14 millimeter nuts holding the strut into the bucket. We're gonna go ahead and remove those. I got the short socket on the ratchet here to do so. And while those are still attached, I'm just gonna grab the ratcheting wrench and get that one in the back. That just goes to show how much heat makes a difference. Obviously, don't apply too much because right underneath that, there is some rubber. And right there, there's some rubber. So be careful, but if you're struggling, an induction coil will help. I wouldn't use a blowtorch just because of the rubber, but hey. With the back one removed, we can make quick work of these two in the front with the electric ratchet. So now we can go ahead and remove our strut. We're gonna have to do a little bit of work with the sway bar here just to make sure that it clears, but once you get the bottom out, it's really not that bad. So that's one side uninstalled. I would go ahead and go over to the other side and get that caught up to exactly where we're at right now. And before you go to the spring compressor, we actually need to remove our skid plate. Reason being our sway bar is gonna have to come out so we could install these sway bar relocation brackets. They're gonna go right there. That's what we're gonna do next. And again, the first step to that is removing the skid plate. So this is held on with four 12 millimeter bolts. We're actually missing one right there, but that's no big deal. One there, one there, one there, should be one there. We're gonna remove them all. This thing does tend to vibrate when you impact it, so cover your ears.
Now it's gonna be held on with a couple hooks at the front, so just grab it by the back, lift it up, push her forward, so it'll drop right off. Now we're gonna swap over to the 14 millimeter socket and remove these two bolts on the sway bar. Same thing goes on the other side. So here's how this is gonna work. Uh, you can see on our new relocation bracket, we have a couple of different holes. These two are gonna line up with our original holes and the one in the back, we're gonna get that started with a factory bolt. And then in this recessed one here, we're gonna put in this new bolt and tighten that down with an Allen key. But first, we gotta hit that with a little bit of blue Loctite. And we're gonna tighten that down with an eight millimeter Allen key. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the short 17 millimeter bolt that comes with those sway bar brackets. We're gonna get that started finger tight. Reason being, this sway bar bracket, it's gonna slide in there like so, and then we can tighten down the other side. Now we're gonna wait on that. I'm gonna get the other side caught up to this one. And what we're actually gonna do next is start on our struts. Reason being, the looser this is, the easier the strut is gonna be able to get in there. So we're gonna save that until after we get the strut in. So here we are over by the machine that keeps me awake at night. Definitely gonna be engaging the safety squints for something like this. But in all serious, all jokes aside, you wanna take this thing seriously. When you compress a spring like this, there's so much potential energy. So you wanna make sure all of those fingers have a nice good grasp on those coils before you go ahead and crank down and remove that 17 millimeter nut on top. We have everything lined up. I got it lined up off camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and crank down on this and we can remove the nut. So we don't need that much tension right now. Once you could spin the strut freely here at the bottom, you're pretty much good to go. What we're gonna do, grab our 17 millimeter ratcheting wrench, get that started around the nut. And I'm gonna use the adjustable because I'm a terrible mechanic. Now, as we come to the last couple of threads, you can see our strut is held up by that bushing right there. Just gonna relieve some tension. And then we can pull out our old blue and yellow strut. So now that we have our good old Bilstein removed from the spring, figure now would be the perfect time to grab our new TerraFlex strut put it on the table next to the old one and draw some comparisons and differences between both of these two pieces. The first thing I really wanna highlight here is just how much more beefy this new strut is gonna be. The body is effectively 50% bigger. This guy over here is about an inch and a half in diameter while our new one is gonna be two and a quarter inches. So that means there's a lot more fluid in this new one and that is gonna help with the cooling capacity. Now it's the same story up here with the shaft as well. This one measures about 14 millimeters in diameter. This one is gonna measure about 19 millimeters in diameter. And that extra durability is really gonna go a long way if you plan on really beating on your Tacoma. So that is definitely a good thing to have. Down at the bottom, again, same story. You can see just how thin this Bilstein is right here. And that's definitely gonna be a weak point. 
Not as big of a problem with the new Teraflex unit. This is definitely way more beefy than the factory stuff. Now we're getting some brand new features as well. Of course, we have that Zerk fitting at the bottom. Again, that's going to allow you to keep that continuously lubricated. That's not a feature on the factory Bilstein, so that is definitely a nice touch. And we have some choice where this carrier is gonna go with that snap ring right there. Now is the time we're gonna have to make that choice. So if you plan on not wanting any lift, move it up one, that direction. And if you do have some heavy duty off-road gear, move it down one and right in the middle is gonna be level. That's exactly where we're gonna stick. Now our carrier is gonna be an upgrade as well. This is billet aluminum, which is really, really nice stuff. And then we have this isolator here, which is injection molded, and that is durable for sure. That's exactly what you want. We can go ahead and slide that over top, just like so. We also have this brand new bump stop right here. Again, this is microcellular foam, good stuff. All this is gonna do is slide right over top of the shaft, just like that. It's actually gonna sit closer to right there. And that's pretty much gonna do it as far as differences and similarities go between these two. One small thing, we are losing that boot on there, which I thought was a nice touch, but hey, the seals on here are really good and they're definitely gonna keep that shaft really clean. So without any further ado, we can go ahead and grab our new strut. We're gonna head back to the spring compressor and get this bolted up. All right, so back by the spring compressor. When you're putting this in, you wanna make sure the Zerk fitting is gonna face the wheel. That way you have easy access to it. And I happen to know that that guy is over here. So what we're gonna do is come up through there. Like that. I'm gonna throw that on the top. It just needs to be a hair tighter. And we can line all that up. And we can tighten that down with our 19 millimeter ratcheting wrench and the adjustable. And I believe that the top of this is actually an eight millimeter nut if you wanted to hold that still with a real wrench. Now at this point, we can relieve the tension on our spring compressor and head back to the truck. Now all we're gonna do is come back to the truck and we're gonna get that started in the bucket and push that up through. For now, just finger tight, you wanna throw those 14 millimeter nuts back on. We'll get the bottom situated, and then we'll come back and tighten down the top after we got the bottom done. All right, so the bottom, we're actually pretty close. We're pretty lined up here. Pretty much just eyeballed the rotation of this, but you wanna make sure this Zerk fitting is out. If not, head back to the spring compressor and flip this 180. Otherwise, the studs at the top aren't gonna line up. So, the bottom, what we're gonna have to do just see if I can get it started here. And it's not looking great. So what I'm gonna do, this guy right here, it's called a spud wrench. It's basically an adjustable. It's also got a hammer on there, but at the bottom, it has an alignment dowel. This is like an iron worker's tool, but it comes in handy for stuff like this. I'm just gonna give it a small turn. There we go, lines up really, really easily. Highly recommend having something like this on hand. Now we can throw in our 19 millimeter bolt and on the other side, we're gonna throw on the washer and our 19 millimeter nut. And then we can tighten that down. Back up to the top, we got three 14 millimeter nuts to tighten down. I'm just gonna take down some of the threads with the electric ratchet.
at this point, you want to get the strut on the other side completely caught up and then you can bolt down your sway bar over here as well. And again, 17 millimeter socket. Next thing we're gonna take care of is our upper ball joint. And to do that, just gonna get that upper control arm seated in the knuckle. A lot of times you do have to use a pry bar, but this one looks like it was tightened down pretty low, so you can just get it with your hands. But once you have that done, go ahead and throw on the 19 millimeter castle nut and tighten it down. Align the hole and run back through your cotter pin. Next thing we're gonna do is our tie rod, and that's gonna go right back in, and then secure with the factory 19 millimeter castle nut as well. And just for safety's sake, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that old rusty cotter pin and put a fresh one in there. Next thing we're gonna take care of is our sway bar end link into the knuckle. It's gonna go through just like so and get a factory 17 millimeter nut. So now we're pretty much done. Just gotta put our brake and ABS lines back. We're gonna start with this one on the upper control arm. This is gonna require a 10 millimeter socket. Then we'll swap over to the 12 to get this one on the frame. And we're gonna need a 12 for this one on the knuckle as well. And after we're done this, you repeat the same process over on the other side, get that all buttoned up and then we can move to the rear. Now at this point, this side is pretty much wrapped up. We're gonna go ahead and repeat the same process over on the other side, get the skid plate hooked up with the 12 millimeter socket and then we can move to the rear. So now we can get started on the rear. First thing we're gonna have to do is get this shock out of here. Now, if you're working on really any Tacoma, especially the older ones, this one being a 2005, you're gonna find a ton of rust. And these two 14 millimeter nuts right here are gonna be really, really tough to remove. So I already broke out the big guns off camera, hit it with the wire brush, a little bit of rust penetrant and the induction coil just to throw some heat on there. We're also gonna break out the good old Nipex pliers here with the Cobra jaw to hold the boot still while we back that nut off. And there you go. There's two nuts on there, they're a jam nut. The other one got away from me, but just goes to show you a little bit of prep work and the right tools, a little bit of know-how, make quick work of any rusty nut. Now we can use a 17 millimeter wrench and socket to remove the bolt out of the bottom shock mount. Now, next up, we're gonna focus on removing our U-bolts basically disconnecting the leaf spring from the axle tube. Before you do that, you wanna make sure the axle tube is supported. If you're working on the floor, floor jack, our case, we're gonna use some pole jacks here and just apply some very light upward pressure to keep that from moving around. And it's a 19 millimeter socket to remove these four nuts.
Then you can pull this plate off the bottom and remove the U-bolts. Another thing we're gonna remove is this factory bump stop from the top of the leaf spring. So now that we have all of our rear suspension components removed, I figured now's the perfect time to lay everything out, put the old stuff next to the new stuff, and again, we'll draw some comparisons and differences between our factory stuff and our new TerraFlex kit. Now, first things first, let's talk about these shocks. Now, the biggest difference between these two is going to be volume. You can see the shock body is going to be much bigger with the new one being about 2.3 inches in diameter. Old one's gonna be about 1.7. So you're adding fluid there, which is gonna help, again, with cooling capacity. Also adding to that, this is gonna be a reservoir shock, so you get some extra fluid in there as well. Again, cooling capacity. On that reservoir, you also get that fast adjust knob, allowing you to dial in exactly how this shock is gonna respond. And that's not a feature at all on the factory stuff, so a huge upgrade there. Now, while we're on the topic of diameter, let's talk about the shafts. I can't see past this metal boot on the factory one, but it's safe to say that this new TerraFlex shaft is gonna be a little bit bigger in diameter, just adding to the durability. Now to go over some of the other components we have on the table, again, we have our lift block in the middle with that little alignment pin. Again, you don't have one of these from the factory, so there's nothing to compare it to, but you do have some supporting components that are gonna come with that lift block. We have our new bump stop right here, which is gonna be a foam instead of this metal one, which was from the factory. It's also a little bit taller as I put it in there. We still have to press it in, so it's gonna get just a tiny bit shorter, but just adding a little bit more height to the bump stop. Also, we're getting new U-bolts here. These are gonna be a little bit longer to accommodate for the lift, and that is exactly what we're gonna need. So that's pretty much gonna do it as far as differences and similarities between these two kits go. There is a little bit of prep work we're gonna have to do for the shock before we head back to the truck, and I figured we'd do that now while we're on the table. It's gonna involve this guy right here. What this is, this is an alignment tab if you wanna use factory wheels. You can see there's already one on there if you wanna use aftermarket wheels, and it's kinda of got a bias to it. Now what that's gonna do is this is gonna sit on that lip in the bucket, and it's basically gonna turn the reservoir from being flush like that out like that so it could clear the bucket without cutting. Now, the factory wheels, the back spacing is just too heavy. So what they give you is this one that's perfect 90. It's gonna bring that reservoir in. We're gonna have to cut our shock bucket, but the tire is gonna clear in front of that. Our truck is gonna run factory wheels, so we're gonna show you exactly what goes into something like that if you wanted to keep your factory wheels. First things first though, we gotta change out that alignment tab. Now what we're gonna do is pull off our bushings. And then this is gonna go aside. You can see how this is biased to the side. That little turn right there, that's gonna move the reservoir out past the bucket and allow everything to clear without cutting. Again, this is what you're gonna wanna use if you have aftermarket wheels that cut down on the back spacing. Factory wheels, we're gonna use this one. That's a perfect 90. That is gonna go on there. Then we could reinstall our bushings. And for the time being, I'm gonna put the top bushing on and hold that together with the nut. This is factory, this is aftermarket. Now the next thing we're gonna have to take care of on that shock is gonna be this guy right here. This is called a roost guard. It's just basically another layer of protection over that piston shaft. And this is going to attach with the four millimeter Allen key bolt that comes included in the kit. Before we do it though, we're gonna hit it with a little bit of blue Loctite. So once you have that roost guard installed, that's gonna be the shock taken care of. Now we can get back to the job at hand, installing this lift block. We'll come back and install the shocks, obviously a little bit later on. And of course, since we're doing factory wheels, there's gonna be a little bit of cutting involved. So stay tuned for that. Right now, before we do this lift block, we have to install the actual foam part 
for our bump stop into this mounting cup. So all we're gonna do is lube it up and press it into place. So now we're all set and with that foam part installed, you can see the height difference in these bump stops. Put the two behind each other like that. You can see our new one is gonna be just a little bit taller. But that's gonna do it. Time to hop back to the install. We're gonna need our rear lift block obviously and this little alignment dowel to make sure everything lines up. Then we can bolt it down with the new U-bolts. Back over by the truck, all we're gonna do is lower our pole jacks to make some room. And once we think we got enough, we can go ahead and slide in that lift block and let that little alignment dowel slide into place. Now, if you haven't done so already, you wanna get the other side caught up and then do the same thing. Now at this point, we're just gonna align everything, come up on the pole jacks, Now at this point, once we have everything lined up, we can go ahead and throw on our new bump stops and tighten everything down with the new U-bolt. Now on the bottom of the U-bolts, we're gonna get our new 22 millimeter nut started. And when we tighten these down, just like changing a tire, you wanna do this in a cross pattern just to make sure the forces are evenly distributed along this plate. And then we can do the same thing over on the other side. See that's looking about even right there. So next thing we're gonna do is install our shocks. Now we got a little bit to go over again if you plan on doing factory wheels versus aftermarket wheels. Now, if you're using the other alignment tab, this is gonna get a little bit of an angle to it, sort of like that, and the reservoir is then gonna be able to clear this shock bucket right here. However, you do need aftermarket wheels that have less backspacing than factory in order to have this right here. Now, factory tab, what that's gonna do is keep this flush and that is going to be able to accommodate for the extra backspacing that the factory wheel has. However, the shock isn't gonna go up there because the bucket is basically in the way. So what we have to do is notch that to allow our reservoir to get all the way up in there. And then it's gonna be as simple as pie. I'm gonna grab the cutoff wheel, the grinder, and some black spray paint, and we'll get that taken care of. 
So how you're gonna wanna measure this, you basically wanna follow this flat line right here and just come all the way back. Sort of like that. So just a continuation of this line and that's gonna be an inch and three quarter deep. Now you're also gonna wanna measure about an inch down from the top and hey, we're pretty close actually right where we're at right there. And then you just wanna follow this line straight down parallel basically with the frame. Just using the ruler as a straight edge. Come in just a skosh. And that is gonna be our cut right there. In order to get this radius, we're gonna drill out a half inch hole. So we're gonna start with the pilot hole using the step bit. Now we can take the cutoff wheel and follow the lines. So over here on the driver's side, we're gonna do the same exact cut. However, there is an extra support bracket here. There's really no measurement for this, but you're just gonna cut it on a diagonal following that sort of ellipse right there. And then you're gonna bring it to this corner. Next thing we're gonna do is just clean up our cuts a little bit. I got the flap wheel and the die grinder to do that. We're gonna do the same thing over here on this side and then we can give it a fresh coat of paint. Now there's one step left and that is to finally install our shock. Now before we do, one thing I do have to mention for the newer trucks, specifically 2015 and newer, what you wanna do is drill out this top mount here to seven eighths of an inch and obviously you'd wanna spray paint that too but that's basically going to allow your bushing to sit correctly in that top mount. Since we're working on an older truck, we don't need to do that and this can go right in. And then on the top, we're just gonna put our bushing down and follow up with the 19 millimeter nut. So now we just need to get the bottom mounted up with the factory 19 millimeter hardware. You might as well set the shock to soft for this step. And then take the pry bar, get that up in the air a little bit, and try to get that bolt started. And again, we can tighten that down with 19 mil on both sides. Guys, that's gonna do it for the install. Just a couple of closing thoughts here. You wanna make sure everything is torqued to spec. Then you can put the wheels back on and take your Tacoma right to the alignment shop. 
But that's gonna do it for my review and install of the TerraFlex two inch Falcon Sport tow haul lift system, fitting all 05 and newer Tacomas. As always guys, thank you for watching. Keep it right here at Extreme Terrain for all things Tacoma.